I just want to first off just give credit, and I hope you guys really shout for this one because if it wasn't for our volunteers and our group leaders, like we wouldn't be able to have youth. So can y'all just give it up for your group leaders? Yeah. Yeah. And um, if you're new with us tonight, we are, uh, we're just, we took, kind of took a break in our series last week, but we're going to close Love Shapes tonight. I know you guys are excited to stop talking about all these weird things to talk about, right? Especially in church, right? Love, sex, marriage, dating, all the fun things to talk about, right? Right? But here's the deal. I know you guys are talking about that stuff anyway. And uh, if I'm being honest... The church, not generation, but like the church at large, has done a bad job of talking about these subjects and leaving it up to your, uh, your, your teachers and your coaches and all those guys. Uh, so I'm grateful that we can have these weird, awkward conversations, okay? I know you might not be, but I am grateful for it. And if this is your first time, or maybe you came last week, you've come back this week, I'm just going to give a recap of what we've been talking about, okay? And I just want to remind you of our focus, what our focus has been over the last few weeks. And it has been this, to discover God's plan for relationships, love, dating, marriage, and sex, and how it lines up, everybody say, with His design and purpose, God's design and purpose, right? So if you're new with us, this has been our focus over the last few weeks, okay? So to catch you up, I want to give just a real quick recap, right? Miss Diana kicked it off, talked about who God created and what their purpose is. If you want to go back and watch that, I highly encourage you to. Uh, all of this is on our YouTube channel. Uh, she talked about who did God create? He created male and female. And our purpose, right, on this planet is to be image barrier of God, right? To reflect the image of God, right? And then we talked about the purpose of dating and diving into what love actually is, right? We explained several different ways that in today's culture we use the word love, right? The same word can say, man, I love you as a friend. I love my dog. I love my wife. I love my kids, right? But realistically, there are only a few legitimate ways that we can use the word love. And we dove into that. And I encourage you to go back and, and watch those, right? And then we took a break, and then we talked, we talked about healthy dating, right? And healthy dating leads to healthy marriages, and healthy marriages look like Christ on display, okay? So, again, just trying to catch you up if you haven't been here, right? And if the intention of dating is to get married, then why do we get married, right? If we've discovered why we date in the first place, and if we're dating to potentially marry this person, then why to even get married, right? And we're going to ask this question tonight and hopefully answer this tonight is what is the purpose of marriage, okay? And again, I know tonight could be, I don't care about this, Tyler, but again, just take notes, store these in your Bible, and then come thank me later when you decide to get married, okay? Because nobody told me this, all right? Nobody, nobody. And you can thank your small groups leaders 10 years from now for having these discussions with you. So, what is the purpose of marriage? And if I'm just being honest, and I didn't get my wife's permission, so y'all pray for your boy, right? I'm going to tell you how I fell in love with Lindsay. I'm going to tell you. So, it all started, all right? So, I'm just kidding. But for real, I was... Like I said earlier on in our messages, I didn't date a whole, whole lot, right? I would try to pursue a girl, and they were like, well, you're too nice. I still don't know what that means. Too nice. I needed to be meaner, right? Too nice. Um, so I was 18, so our church launched in, on March 4th of 2012. I was a senior in high school, all right? 2012, I graduated, and GC started. So I came to the church. And, uh, man, I play music. I love music. I was like, wow, this is my church, right? Music is loud. I love it, right? And uh, came, enjoyed it, loved it, whatever. <clears throat> then I auditioned for the band. I was on the band. We used to have student ministry, what we do right here, on Sunday nights, y'all, at J.W. Wiseman Elementary School. Do we have anybody here that was there at J.W. Wiseman 
A couple of you. All right, 2012. Yeah, a lot of you were in G-Kids. That's nuts, right? I'm old now. So we used to have youth. It was called Pulse. Anybody remember Pulse? Any of my Pulse people? Come on. Pulse back at J.W. Wiseman. And uh, these two dudes, again, I'm a senior in high school. We used to do what's called crunk time. Anybody remember crunk time? A very few of you. Okay. We used to take, like, hip-hop rap music, and we used to think we were super cool. We would actually uh, take rap songs, change the lyrics, and we wrote Christian rap songs to them, and it was a good time, all right? Just be grateful we don't do that anymore. I'm just saying. Uh, it was a good time, but we did worship. We heard a message, and uh, we, we did groups. We did the whole thing, right? 2012. Well, these two dudes, one by the name of Jackson Cook and the other one by the name of Seth Stewart, they were like, so they were a, a few years younger than I was. Remember, I'm a senior in high school. You seniors know, right? When an underclassman comes up to you and tries to talk to you, it can be weird sometimes, right? Also, when they come to you and they're like, hey, bro, you should date my sister. <clears throat> Listen, bro, one, I don't like you, and I'm not dating your sister, right? Anybody, I'm not dating your sister, bro. I'm not doing that. I don't know your sister. No, I'm good. Well, little did I know, Seth and Jackson have been going home and, like, really gassing me up. Like, Lindsay, there's this guy, all right? His name's Tyler. He plays guitar, and he raps, right? Not really raps, right? There's this guy. You got to meet him, right? He's awesome, right? He's so cool. Just gassing me up, and I was just some weird white kid trying to be cool, right? Not girl material, okay? Well, so since I had in my mind, you know, if I am, I always dreamed of a family one day. I always, I wanted to get married. I wanted to have kids. I love my family. I love, like, I grew up in a great family. I'm a family guy, okay? So I'm like, you know, I would love, I, I would love that one day to get married, have kids, settle down, all the things, right? And I got Seth over here, date my sister, Right. So long story kind of short. Right. She actually came. Lindsay did uh, back at Wiseman a couple times, saw me act like a clown. And I'm like, now I'm like, wow, you fell in love with that guy. <laughs> Whoo. Uh, anyway, so found out, OK, her name is Lindsay. I'm a finder on Instagram. Right. I got to got to check her out. You know, so I get on Instagram and I'm like, OK, Seth, I might date your sister. <laughs> right. I might date your sister. And, uh, but I was like, I can't tell him that, right? Then it would be all weird again. So well, I did what, as we do, I sent her a DM, right? Slid into DMs before it was cool. All right? You know what Lindsay did? Nothing. So I was like, I followed her. Some days went by, messaged her. Nothing. I was like, Seth, Really? You, you, you told, you like, this cool guy, you know, whatever. So I did what you do. I unfollowed her on Instagram, right? <laughs> Got to get her attention, you know. I was like, she don't want to like, she don't like me, whatever. So then I, I was like, Twitter, like, we didn't have X. We had Twitter. So on Thanksgiving, you know, like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to message Lindsay on Twitter and wish her a happy Thanksgiving. She's going to love me, right? So I did that. And you guys know what happened? Nothing. So we're starting off great. I'm going back to Seth. I'm like, your sister is ignoring me, bro. Right? But here's the thing. Little did I know, little did I know that Lindsay had recently given her heart and life to Christ and was off of social media. And here I sit in my bedroom in my feelings because Lindsay's trying to get closer to the Lord. Wow. Okay. She's been checking me ever since. Right? So... I told I go back and I report to Seth and I'm like, bro, I can't get a hold of your sister. You know, she's cute, but I don't know if she likes me. So he's like, I'll do, I'll do this. What if I gave her your number? And I was like, Ooh, I don't know about that, man. He's like, well, I'll do that and I'll go home and tell her. Well, little did I know, I guess she had been scouting me out too after she came off her fast. And she's like, yes, Seth, he can have my number. And I was like, yes. That never happened before, right? Everybody else was pushing me away. 
So I did, as you do, I waited six hours to text her. Right? I didn't want to be desperate, fellas. All right? Okay? I'm going to be, got your number. Boom. Hey, I'm going to be that guy. All right? Take notes. I'm married for almost eight years now. got three kids. It's great. Be patient. Right? Don't be desperate. I'm just kidding. Now I'm blowing my cover. Lindsay, I love you. All right? I, I waited on purpose. Right? So texted her. We got to know each other. Right? She was into the same thing. She loved worship music. She was actually planning a trip to Passion Conference. And I'm like, Passion Conference, dude? Like, I watched their videos on YouTube. Mass, big Passion Church. They have uh, worship records. All the things that I love. Lindsay loved music. I'm like, God, what? This is incredible. She likes music. I like music. I think it's cool. Don't screw this up, Gilman. Right? But she was chasing the Lord. She was actually serving in her church at the time, a uh, church here in Portland. Uh, that church, they did like roll. She ran media. She like counted to see who was there, took attendance. I was serving at my church. Remember, crunk time, cool guy, right? Serving, doing worship, doing all the things, setting up, tearing down, right? And then I took her out on a date. I was like, hey, what's your favorite restaurant? She's like, Demas's in Hendersonville. I'm like, Demas's, we're going. I, I, yeah, you're cute. We're going, right? Went there. We ate. I remember the booth. Every time we go there, we're like, hey, babe, there's the booth. I know. We met right there, you know, our first date. It was awesome, right? I had a steak. She got black and chicken pasta, right, babe? I got you. I got you. So, but I asked her dad, and this is cool. This is really neat. She was 19 at the time, still lived at home. I was like, hey, Mickey, what time does your daughter need to be home? And he's like, wow, no one's ever asked me that before. Because why? I respected her. I respected her parents. And I knew that she was pursuing the Lord. I knew I was pursuing the Lord. And I didn't want to screw this up. Right? I didn't want to mess this up. Because I'm like, this could be something special. Because I don't run across a lot of girls like Lindsay. And maybe this is legit. Right? And we went on a date. We started talking to each other. And then there was one time it was like, hey, we're still talking. Like after the date. I was like, wow, she texted me again. Okay. I'm not that weird. Right? And uh, continued talking. I'm like, so what are we? She said, boyfriend and girlfriend. Ah, sweet. I have a girlfriend. So cool. So cool. Didn't have a lot of these growing up. So this is awesome. Right? So then we started talking and everything. And it just, man, it just worked out. And it was great. We both pursuing the Lord, all the things. And then one Sunday at J.W. Wiseman, she shows up out of nowhere to surprise me. And I'm like, man, God, thank you, God. Right? You like my church? You like my church? Not a lot of people liked our church at that time, right? We're, we're still kind of the crazy church, but that's okay. Um, like, she liked it. And then we started talking. It's like, you know, really going to start getting serious. Maybe we should come together. And she started coming to our church, started serving on our production team, our worship team. Not our worship team, sorry. Babe, keep singing in the car with me, right? Our media team, our lighting team started serving, started setting up and tearing down together. Started serving together, and I'm like, something is special here, right? And we started to fall in love with each other. And then a year later, we were engaged. And then a year later, we got married. And then a couple years after that, we had our first kid, right? And we're about to be married for eight years with three kids. It's amazing. It's great. And now we're leading the student ministry. What? It crazy. Crazy. It's insane to me that the very ministry that ministry that we met in, now we get to serve together in. It's insane. You know who did not think of that? This guy. Not me. Not me. But I wanted to just share that story. And there's some key parts in that story that I hope you took away. And we're going to dive into a little bit later on. But not all stories are just happily ever after, right? Me and Lizzie, since then, man, we've had arguments, you know? She wants to rip my head off a lot. She lives with me, right? Y'all only put up with me for a couple hours. She has to live with me, right? Strong woman, strong woman. But what's the point of marriage? And honestly, the sad thing about it, as I was studying, I was doing some studying on marriages. And you know what's crazy is that a few weeks ago, we discussed that over 50% of marriages end in a divorce, okay? Over the last 50 years, the marriage rate has dropped by nearly 60%. That's a lot for my math people, 
right? 60%. That's a lot. But why? And honestly, though, if honestly, just Tyler speaking, I think that this was a good thing that has now turned bad. Okay, I, I honestly believe that this was had good intentions, but it's now turned bad. Right now it has turned into it went from like, hey, I want to slow down. I don't want to fit the social norm of graduating high school, going to college, get a job, buy a car, get a house, get married, get a dog, have kids. Right. And if you don't do all that by your 25, then something's wrong with you. Right. I know that was a lot of the culture in my like growing up. Like, you went to college, and if you didn't check all these boxes, you're at Christmas, and your grandma's like, hey, bud, what, you gotta, what's wrong? And it's like, nothing, right? I'm trying to figure my life out, right? And I don't want to bring somebody else along in this right now, right? But we felt forced sometimes, like, man, I guess I need to go get a girlfriend. I don't know. I need to have a dog. I need a house. I need all these things, right? So I think the intentions were good, but now it has turned into a bad thing. And um, I just want to remind somebody that that is not a good reason to get married is to just check boxes and to please your parents and to please your grandparents and to try to fit into this social norm. OK, and tonight we're going to discuss a few things because I believe this. This is extra that God doesn't want you to just play purpose. He wants you to have purpose. OK, and if you're not picking up what I'm saying here, a lot of people play house, they play marriage, they play all these things. Right. But God doesn't want you to just play purpose. He wants you to be confident and he wants you to live out purpose. And if he blesses you with a spouse one day, he wants you to live out purpose together. OK, he doesn't want you to just play around. OK, and we're going to dive into that in Genesis chapter two, because the Bible actually talks a ton about marriage, okay? Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. When the Lord God made earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all of the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living purpose, right? This is where we see how God created us. And there's a whole message about that that you can go watch that Diana did uh, a few weeks ago. But let's skip to 15. The Lord God placed the man, after he created him from the dust, right, in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, remember say warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all of the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all of the livestock, all of the birds of the sky, and all of the wild animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man explained, like when Lindsay, at last, right, she's here. The one, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she is taken from the man. This, is, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Now, this is a lot of scripture, but within this scripture, I believe there are four godly reasons to get married, okay? Four godly reasons to get married. And honestly, I know what some of you might be thinking. Well, there's four godly reasons to get married. What if I've already made my mind up that, hey, I'm not getting married. I don't want to get married. Can I remind you, you need to lean in even more so because these very things, yes, 
are meant for marriage and they are godly reasons to get married, but they are also godly reasons to, for, to help you remain single in a healthy way, okay? In a healthy way, because can I remind you, there is a healthy way to be single and a non-healthy way to be single, okay? It's real. It's real. There's a healthy way t- to pursue marriage, and then there's a very disastrous way to pursue marriage, okay? And again, I'm, I'm grateful for these conversations. But four things that stood out in these verses. And the first one is, the first reason to get married is this, to have community. We were built for community, okay? We're going to reference verse 18. We're going to go back to that. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Can I remind you, and if you have been here long enough, you know this, that we are better together. Can I remind you of this too, that we are weak when we are alone, okay? Have you ever seen any videos on YouTube of like these animals chasing after this herd, right? Maybe I'm the only weird one here, but like there's a pack of animals and there's like lions chasing after them. You know what they don't do? They don't go after the the group that is together. You know what they do? They wait until one becomes weak and is alone and attacks that one. In the same way, when we are alone, we are weak and we are vulnerable to be, man, just destroyed, right? These animals get killed, okay? We're weak when we're alone. We need community, okay? We need community. We need someone to do life with right? And to have purpose and to carry out our God-given purpose. We need community, right? Whether that's in a relationship or not, you still need community. I know people that are like in their 50s and they're fussing all the time about how they didn't got a girlfriend. It's like you still need community, right? With a wife, without a wife, with a husband, without a husband. You were designed, even the the first two chapters of the Bible talks about having community and a helper and someone to do life with, right? Number two is to have a partner. The second reason for a godly marriage is to have a partner. We need help to work out God's plan, okay? Verses 15, verse 15 through 23 says this, The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over the garden. Might I add you, the garden was way bigger than this room. It was massive, all right? There's no way Adam could have taken care of all this by himself. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you will sure die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper. Everybody say helper. Who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all of the wild animals and all of the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one of them. He gave names to the livestock, all the birds, 